Liz Wall, who is an anchor for Russia Today, resigned li live on air, and she gives her reasons in the following video. Take a look. Last night, RT made international headlines when one of our anchors went on the record and said Russian intervention in Crimea is wrong. And indeed, as a reporter on this network, I face many ethical and moral challenges, especially me personally, coming from a family whose grandparents, my grandparents, came here as refugees during the Hungarian Revolution, ironically to escape the Soviet forces. I have family on the opposite side, on my mother's side, uh, that sees the daily grind of poverty. And I'm very lucky to have grown up here in the United States. Uh, I'm the daughter of a veteran. My partner is a physician at a military base where he sees every day the first-hand accounts of the ultimate prices that people pay for this country. And that is why, personally, I cannot be part of network funded by the Russian government that whitewashes the actions of Putin. I'm proud to be an American and believe in disseminating the truth. And that is why, after this newscast, I'm resigning. Wow. Damn, drums. That was a very strong and powerful thing to do, especially since it was live on the air. And, you know, unfortunately, we don't know what the specific details are. We don't know exactly how she feels that they're whitewashing Putin. I don't, I mean, I watch RT time to time, especially Abby Martin's show, but I don't watch, you know, all the shows. So um, I wish that she could be a little more specific, but obviously there's something that she feels really uncomfortable with. And to make that decision, I think, speaks volumes of her journalistic integrity. So now, obviously, yesterday there was news that Abby Martin uh, said at the end of her show uh, that she thinks the Russian uh, incursion into Crimea is wrong. Mm -hmm. And then RT said, oh, well, she said in the midst of all of that that she doesn't know as much about Ukrainian politics and history as she should. Uh, so we're going to send her to Crimea, okay? And then she said she's not going to Crimea, and that was a huge story in and of itself. And now this happens. And in the meanwhile, I read um, an account from someone who used to work at RT and left for similar reasons. And it's interesting because his story reminded me of my own at MSNBC. He mm -hmm. talked about subtle and sometimes not so subtle uh, influences to go in a certain direction. So. When, you know, and we don't know if that's what affected Liz Wall, but it certainly sounds like from her statement that that's what happened, where they say, okay, well, let's not do that story, let's do another story instead. Or if so if it's a story against Russia or one of its allies, well, let's leave that one alone, let's emphasize other things. Now, the thing is, RT does some good stories, they have some great hosts and producers, etc., uh, and it's worthwhile stories that look at the failings of the American government, whether it's the NSA spying and the list goes on and on, right? But when you do it in the context of not being equally critical of other governments, then, whoa, you know, you've taken what is good journalism and unfortunately tainted it with a context where you're only doing it against one country. With both politics and journalism, you always have to follow the money. And usually uh, there's an issue with the funding of, of many programs because if, if you have corporate sponsors, well, those corporations can influence the content that's being put out there. If it's government funded, there are issues with that as well. Um, so I, I worry about what's going to happen with journalism um, in the future because, you know, shows like ours, we have this huge luxury of being able to say anything we want to say. No one is going to try to shut us down or censor us because we make our own rules here. And thankfully, we have members that help us remain independent, right? But you can only grow so much when you have that type of business model. And it's difficult. It's difficult to have enough members to fund your program and, and put out the content that you feel is important. You know, we've created minor miracles because we're actually larger than all those uh, folks online, right? And online is, is the future. Uh, but they have sometimes billions at their disposal. Mm. The fact that we compete with them and beat them online is amazing, is amazing, right? And then one advantage we have is that we actually cater to our audience and we try to give them, to the best of our abilities, the truth, right? Uh, but Anna's very right. Now, look, it's not just RT, which is Russian-owned. Now, Al Jazeera has some issues. They do great reporting in a lot of co different contexts, but when it comes to their home government of Qatar, mm, not so much, right? You have to be real, and that's 
that happens, right? But then, you know, it's easy for American journalists to look down their nose at them and go, <laughs> owned by the government, it's government sponsored, yeah, right. But wait a minute, now look at the connections that, for example, Comcast has, that's the owner of NBC, MSNBC, mm -hmm. et cetera, to our government. Okay, maybe they're not directly owned by the government, but are they working with the government? Do they need certain licenses and mergers approved by the government? Of course. Absolutely. A and again, you follow the money. You see the amount of money that they've spent on lobbying in government to ensure that they can make the merger between uh, them and Time Warner happen. And it's likely to be approved by the FCC just based on the amount of money that they've put out there. And before Comcast, NBC was owned by GE, a massive defense contractor who also got paid by our government. So when you get paid by the government or you're dependent on the government, how critical are you gonna be of our government? And realistically, and I have personal experience with this, the answer is not very much, okay? So unfortunately, there are all of these influences that you have to wade through as you're getting your media. That's why some of the best journalism in the world is done by independent media, whether it's The Intercept that Glenn Greenwald, Scahill, et cetera, have set up, whether it was The Guardian, which is also independent, mm -hmm. uh, Salon is independent here, and oftentimes they have the strongest columnists in the country. So watch out for everybody's influences, not just the Russians or, or RT.